Hello again, everyone. This is Game Collector here, and this week I have with me something way better than last week's video. Transformers Generations Thrilling 30, 30 of 30, Windblade. Yeah, I actually got her a couple of weeks ago. This is after I had gotten Roadbuster. I actually got her together with um, the Ambassinator here. I got them together because it was buy one half one buy one get one half off at uh at the store and uh yeah we'll get into the figure itself we'll look at the box first her stats are strength 7 intelligence 8 speed 8 endurance 7 rank 8 courage 7 oh okay let's try this again because i messed up Strength 7, Intelligence 8, Speed 8, Endurance 7, Rank 8, Courage 7, Fire Power, Fire Blast uh, 6, because she has no guns, and um, Skill 9. There's so many 7, 8, 7, 8, 7, 8, it, it gets confusing. So, you know, I hope I didn't screw anything up again. And here is her bio right there, and the 30 of 30. Well, she's not really a telepathic link with Metroplex, but uh, she can talk to him, city speaking and all. Neat little thing. Now, here's her comic, except it's not actually the Windblade series, it's Dark Cybertron, like part 7 or 8. It's like the near ending of uh, the Dark Cybertron saga. I still have to read through it because I haven't read through the uh, comics on here yet. I haven't been reading them because, well, I don't have all of them. What's the point of reading through the saga when you don't have all the issues? You'll just get a bit lost and confused, if anything. So, moving on, she does actually appear in the issue that she's in. It's not her own series, though. And I gotta say, I'm, I dig this figure. It's like the first, well, not the first, but, well, technically it is a first of a fan-made Transformer ever, technically, from a couple years back. Um fans voted, and this is what we got. And she's great. And there's her scab... Yeah, she comes with a scabbard, and what they call the Stormfall Sword, which is a nice translucent purple. I keep it in the scabbard, so I don't lose it. Plus, I can conveniently, like, just peg it onto her. She has weapon storage! Weapon storage is best! And, uh, yeah... Her knees, she has basic knee, shoulder, elbow, wrist. She has a thigh swivel, but it doesn't, it's, yeah, it doesn't want to work. And a bicep swivel. And ball jointed head, which is on there really tight. Speaking of things that are tight on this, this little thing. The instructions tell you to pull up, or if you interpret it the proper way, proper way, pull back. But it's in there so tightly, and it's made of clear plastic, I have to use a little tool to get it out. Oh. I might have to... I'm, I'm going to do this off camera so I don't break her. By accident. We've already seen one or two figures break on this show. I don't need another one. And. Oh, yeah, and here's her uh, 
little kabuki face. And the Japanese are getting a, the Takara version. She gets way more red, so she looks so she looks comic accurate, which kind of pisses me off because she appeared in the American comics first. So why do they get the better version anyway? Oh, you were looking at her chest. Oopsie. Uh, there's her face. And it's really well detailed, and it doesn't have that light piping BS that I've been complaining about the past few, ep the past couple of episodes with Transformers in them. Come on. Auto focus! I think that's as good as we're going to get right now. And here is her little uh, fan, which she can hold. And uh, one problem, her one heel is really, really loose. So having her stand up straight is kind of a problem. And uh, another thing is her scabbard can either fit on the uh, peg holes in her hips, like so, or on the nose cone to her jet mode on her back, which is way more secure and less likely to fall off, at least on mine. Here she is, and now I'll just move her off the camera again so I can put the uh, fan back in place and uh, put the sword back right there and now we're going to transform her or I am going to transform her starting with the uh, shoulders the shoulder pads do move up and down freely and I actually prefer them down I mean it's all a matter of taste the actual art and imagery shows them with them up but giving her slightly thicker shoulders kind of I don't know I just prefer them that way all a matter of taste so there's that rotate her hips all the way around and start with the feet Now, get, move her shins up to her hips, so it'll look like this, and then rotate these like so, and the rear fin will peg together. And now I'm kind of seeing bits of uh, Beast Machine's jet storm in there. It's weird. I didn't notice that until now. Ah, gotta move. Okay, next step. Pull her entire chest forward. And move her arm and wing assembly back. And push... Uh, oh, excuse me. Push her back up. And fold her head in like so and then close it back up next thing you want to do is yes uh, hold on oh yeah fold out these little parts from the wings and then try to get the wings and shoulders lined up and that's the trickiest part Okay, there we there we go. You're gonna have to move her shins up a bit so you can uh Well you'd be able to see better on the side. This peg will go in somewhere along here. I had my flashlight again. 
but yeah, well, another thing is, if you can see that little raised bump near my thumb, this is supposed to go uh, all the way over and connect. There we go. Well, now that that's settled, and these will peg in around there. Also, my neighbors are working on their porch or something. I can hear them banging outside, but hopefully none of that will be, uh, you won't hear any of it because it's muffled by my windows. Ah, there we go. And the nose cones down, and the hands will grip these raised parts here like so, and you can either leave the sword off, or it pegs completely to the underside like so, and boom, you have a uh, little handle for her. Uh, I do really like her jet mode. <laughs> it's a fictional model uh, VTOL jet. Oh, hold on, it's she doesn't always like to hold together have to be a bit particular with her sometimes. Hold on. Off-camera stuff. Those are in. Apparently it's very easy for these upper parts to warp and no longer want to bend in and attach to the fuselage. These little pieces here, these don't peg in too well anymore. I haven't even had her for that long and they're already warped. So that's something to look out for. It's not entirely broken, but it adds to the gaps. Anyway, her VTOL fans do spin and can be turned forward, which is how she flies in her uh, own comic uh, miniseries and such. Yeah. The cockpit doesn't open at all, but it doesn't even have a chair in there. Oh well. And yeah, this didn't exactly go together all too well, did it? Unlike the previous video with a transformer that I had as a toy that I could not absolutely tolerate in the least bit, I, I, I cannot say it enough. I hated that toy. This one, it doesn't exactly hold together that well, but I can't not hate it at all. This is a brand new character who just came out this year, and her toy just came out, so how am I supposed to hate that? Oh yeah, and she has a little hole in the nose cone if you want to put her on a stand or something. Which I don't have. The closest I have is using her scabbard as a... as a little hold thing. But, you know, you can take some... There. 
pull it out and we're gonna put her back in robot mode which is easily easily more easy than going into jet mode hold out her heels shins down so they form the feet all the way. She has little high heel feet which makes it hard as hell for her to stand and her, yeah, the right leg's uh, heel is loose. So that makes it even more fun. Cone folds back and it does have extendable landing gear which I didn't demonstrate but it's there. up. This also goes up. The waist turns around. And the wings can't, her wings can be like folded back. So, you know, you don't have all the wing kibble showing, but being a uh, jet type transformer, wing kibble is always going to be a thing for her. And bonus, she can also physically hold her scabbard. There. Where did I put him? Oh, there he is. Well, I'm gonna have to reach around because bonus comic book action here because of the, uh, her featured series. Yeah, there's the uh, new modern version of Armada Starscream. And she's actually taller than him. Yeah, his head only goes up to her neck. Oh, no, wait! They, they're about the same height. Wow. It just looks like they're... Oh, I'm gonna have to put her scabbard on her back because she's gonna just keep falling over until it's out of the way. And... Right... Right there, right behind that screw and uh, uh, below the fuselage is, yeah, there it is. And her heel screwed up again. And her heel is the only thing that I really don't like. having to reach around uncomfortably and try to pose her in front of Starscream to see how tall they are because they're, I can't pose them next to each other because their wings will start bumping into another, one another. Come on, you can... <sighs> no, you can't, apparently. Finally! And it's weird because they're the same height. I, he's, I don't know if he's taller than her in the comics. I'm pretty sure he is. But they stand face to face as figures. <laughs> I find that absolutely hilarious. And I still need to get Chromia or Chromina or whatever her name. Wow, she actually stands up with her heel turned at an angle. 
rather than have it straight back. Huh. Weird. So, um, that was this week's episode. Here's the uh, comic cover again, in case I forgot to show it. Or I did show it, but whatever. You got to see it again. And I will see you next week with uh, something. Later.